Hey Academy Answers, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us, thanks for listening in. And this is a podcast where we talk about happiness, success, full potential. These days, I'm putting happiness in front most of the time. If you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I am trying to say happiness first because I think most people think that it's the other way around. I think people think it is success, then happiness. But you have to know how to find happiness if you are to truly be successful. So if you get to success and you didn't figure out happiness then that will be achievement and and possessions and then there will be no deep fulfillment and that is empty if you're successful if you're rich if you're wealthy and you're not happy it's healthy it's 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 unhealthy it is it is going to hurt you it is uh empty it is going to be something that feel like it, it didn't matter and all the struggles and pain that you went through to get there will start to amount to pointless so you you're gonna be wondering why did i do this anyway um there must be something else there's something missing so this is a 20 for 20 series i'm doing the 20 principles for 2020 that's gonna help you to start strong to stay focused and to finish strong and i'm going between seven and ten i'm going on this run to kind of call it as it is to go directly to the almost personal issues that's hanging over people head and the misconceptions that we get why we miss our goals why we don't achieve big dreams i'm at number 10 in the series now and this is probably my last rant or my penultimate i might do one more because i have two burning topics that i want to do in this fashion where i just come at you um you're either gonna switch it off halfway in or you're really gonna sit down and absorb this i'm gonna be a uh you know real of real help to you or it's just gonna just make you upset or it just probably don't relate to you you're okay you're good that's fine so, I'll, and you know, I'll tell you a story about um, something that, that an experience that I had in my life. Because oftentimes, the mistakes we make, um, we think um, really matters. But when we go on further in life, we realize that these mistakes are what make us. And um, when I was just out of college, look, I came from from nothing, humble beginnings. We had nothing. I walked three miles to school to take the bus to high school. Three miles after I get off back from the from the from the bus at, at primary school. That's that's a, when you're between grade one and six. We I there's barefoot. We went to school. Um, there's no inside bathroom. There's no wa- wa- running water. There is no electricity for a while. There's no TV in the house until I was about twelve. There's no refrigerator in the house all my years of 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 being with grandma until I went to college, like about fifteen. None of that amenities. We 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 struggled to find dinner. We lived off the land. It was subsistence farming, deep rural Jamaica. Um, nothing was easy. There was no salary coming, so we had to plant, do barter exchange between homes. And sometimes my mom and the other kids in the house, mom, send stuff from the big city when they could. They were struggling too. And there's a little money to do one and two things. We only had a protein, like a meat form, twice per week. So we came from nothing. Where I came from, I there are about four cars that pass pass through every week. I didn't have to see the cars to know who it was because there was a specific time. There was a guy who who had a coffee farm beyond me. He passed on a Monday. The fish guy passed on a Friday morning or a Saturday morning, I think he passed. And the bread van passed on a Wednesday. That's it. We know it. If there was any other car, it was the it was odd, pretty much. So growing up, we dreamt of being able to do these things. When our neighbors have families from overseas or rent a cars all all around and we were so fascinated and it, there was life because they bring stuff they play music they have decorations on their house we never had that stuff so you know fast forward to when i left school i 
my greatest ambition as a young boy, as a guy who managed to push himself to get to college. Now I graduated. I want to have a car. It's a natural thing. Every teenager wants a car. So I was busting my chops to get a car. So when I, my first salary was about like, I just do it in US. I was like 500 US dollars. That's what my monthly salary. You get paid once a month, you get 500 US dollars. And then at the time I moved to the big city, the crime rate was high. I wasn't, a, I wasn't prepared to go and live in some type of uh, low security community for want of a better word or low income community where there were robberies there is that stuff because then in jamaica what we had we had a lot of um secured burglar bars so there was burglar bars everywhere what would happen if you rent a home for let's say a hundred us if you rent an apartment for like a hundred us in 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 any one of these middle income areas or low income areas there was a gate that you'd have to get out of your car open the gate get back into your car drive your car in if you're parking on the inside and then you pull back up your gate then you'd have to get to another burglar bar grill that's going to take you into the house you have to open all of that i thought that that was a recipe to be robbed to get robbed now i was dressing up in a shirt and suit and tie going to work I cannot live in these communities. To my mind, I couldn't live in these communities and people see me doing that every morning. Then one Friday or one Saturday or some night, they'll just target me and they'll just come and rob me. I wasn't prepared to let that happen to me. So I rented a home, an apartment in the in a gated community, posh, up, upscale gated community that I paid 200 US for. I paid 200 US a month and my car was for three hundred us for my payment so that's was my first car so 1995 toyota corolla nice i put rims on it i put um the blue tint i have a big music in there and it was just awesome so loved it first car i was probably the third person in my entire family or maybe the second person to own a car i had a cousin who did it before me he was an accountant at some um, um petroleum company so it was a big deal. When I went back to my community, it was a big deal. Love this car. Fast forward, I started to do business. And then I, um, I I moved in with my girlfriend at the time. And she was using that car. We were using the car together. And then I got another car. And I got a van because we are doing this distribution stuff. And I got two vans. So I had two vans, another car, plus the first car. Love the first car. It was always there. But because the other one was fancy, I was always driving this fancy. On the, it was an Acura. It was a big Acura. And I loved it and I was always driving it. Anyway, my girlfriend was driving the other car. Um, the payments were done by, almost done. Yeah, I think they were finished um, by this. And um, I took three years to pay it off. And the payments are finished and she was using the car. Cars there. I never went to pick up the title from these guys, but you know, it was fine. Anyway, one day I came home and she said, um, where's the title for the car? And I'm like, um, it's probably by the car place. I didn't go and get to say, oh, I'm going to need it because um, my brother is here. He wants to buy the car. So I'm like, okay, I will um, I'll go get it tomorrow. So um, it's fine. So I went to get the car. So I'm like, so this is my first car. This is car. Love this car. It's there. Yeah, she never said to me before that she was going to sell the car. She'll say, I want the title for the car. My brother wanted to buy this car. Okay. You know why she did that? She did it because she knew she wanted, first she wanted, what was she going to do with the money? She wanted to buy a shipment of hair. So we were doing synthetic hair um, out of China. And we, we had our own brands. We got this girl who was a really pretty girl. And she used to work in this office. And we, you know, asked her to use her image. And we use her, you know, dolled her up and make her look pretty. And um, um, put, got the, the, the image to put, send the image to the guy. So we have our own brand of hair called Bashi. And then we were buying at, at, um, this stuff. It was, all, it was closer to Christmas when, when the, the car sale was being talked about and we bought that 
and we we started that company so my my girlfriend and I at the time and then so she said she she was going to sell the car without asking me because she wanted to buy a shipment of of here because Christmas was on us and she thinks she could um, go big with it she could really um, go and sell and sell the shipment really quickly and get a head start in the market because this would be our second shipment because we just got started and the first shipment wasn't even out there yet but if you don't put in your orders it wasn't even out there in the right way yet but this is almost Christmas if you don't put in an early order close to the big end of mid November then you're not going to get that stuff for Christmas um, because you know how shipping is during the season so why did she want want to sell the car my first car without my permission um without asking me and had the buyer her brother with the money there in my apartment that evening ready to go because she knew i didn't care she knew that i knew or she knew that if once i found out that she was going for it i wouldn't care Guys, the biggest mistake you will make in your life. It's not about um, buying the, the mo, mo, a more expensive house than you should, um, spending on the bag, splurging on, on shoes, um, n- not, not um, buying the, 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 the start in the business when you should have started it m- m- per se. Um, not investing in this, not going to this function, not um, being there more for this person. The biggest mistake you can ever make in life is not going for it. And that's the only reason why she sold the car. Because she knew I wouldn't mind if she was going for it. Guys, you have to go for it. Don't matter what is going to happen. You're going to fail. You're going to mess up. You're going to waste money. You're going to make bad decisions. But... If you do those in the process of going for it, all will be fine. Everything will be okay. It will work out. Because your life is not meant to stay small. You are not meant to survive. You are meant to thrive. Go for it. Pick that big goal, that deep dream that bubbled down in your heart. And if you can't come up with it one go, Put it together in increments. You have to be responsible for your life enough to start to say, hey, what's going on here? Why am I feeling this way? I don't like that. Why do I have to do it? Start to ask yourself questions. If you're waking up in the morning and you're thinking that, but I'm rushing. Why am I not at the gym? But you say, okay, why are some people at the gym? What are they doing? Why they're at the gym and I'm going to work every morning this time. They say, okay, I don't like that. And you go to work and you're like, why am I working in this field? I hate this field. I don't like this stuff. Why am I doing this? So you start to ask yourself questions. And you say like, but I feel so alive when I'm talking about um, sports or when I'm talking about relationships or when I'm talking about interior decorating or when I'm talking about planning, help my friend to, helping my friend to plan a wedding or when I am um, looking at homes or when I am drawing or when I'm reading or when I'm writing. Then you start to say, okay, maybe that's what I should be doing because I could do that all then. And you start to put your life together in that way to see what piss you off and to see what make you feel good. Why what piss you off? What piss you off either means that there's so, you need to get out or you need to get in. What do I mean? Well, if you hate to see people dress tacky and it disgusts you so much when homes are modeled um, terribly or it disgusts you when you see um, paintings that are not hung right or it disgusts you when you hear singing that is not done right all those things might be that you want to fix might be because you have a talent to fix it and that might be your calling find what it is that you love that you want to do that you'd feel good doing and decide that you're going to go for it because in your golden years, and I don't like to call it golden years, everybody call it golden. I know what's so golden about that because you're going down the hill. Your golden years is when you're young. In your older years, regrets are going to start to come seep into your life. And as this powerful saying goes, this quote that says 
that 20 years from now, you will have more regrets about the things you didn't do than the things you did do. Mistakes, failures, not knowing what to do, unable to figure it out, frustrated, overwhelmed, it's all a part of the process. Do you watch athletes? Do you watch the, 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 uh, the musicians? Do you watch the high achievers? Do you watch marketers? Do you watch the engineers? Do you watch the lawyers? Do you watch all these achievers who you can see out there? that have managed to get to a certain level? Do, do you listen to their interviews? Are you understanding why they get there? Are you looking at the backstory? Because a lot of times we are starstruck. We're looking at Beyonce's dress and we're looking at um, LeBron's cars and we're looking at the points he scored, but we're not looking further into their story. We're looking at Rihanna's climb to wealth and we're not looking at the work ethic. We're not looking at the stories. We're not looking at the backdrop of what it took them to get there. The common elements in all successful people's life. That's what you need to look at. And understand that, as, as, as I often say, like there's no event that's going to take you there. It's a process. There's no event. Unless you plan to win the lottery, fine. You win the lottery and you make become a millionaire, then you're going to have to go, go through the process to learn to stay a millionaire because otherwise your financial thermostat will take you right back down to the level of money that you're comfortable in handling. That's what happened to 70, 86% of all lottery play, players, 75% of pro ballers, all these people who make so much money, don't know anything about money, never got to the level where their minds are developed with the skill sets and the emotional control and self-management to handle that money and to stay a millionaire. Go for it. Go for it. Whatever it is, pick it. Spend some time going for it. I spoke about the 40 for 7. When you give them 40, give yourself 7. You cannot afford to not give yourself 7. And you cannot afford to not find a way to turn that 7 that you're giving yourself into 14. And then you turn that 14 hours into 21 hours. And then you turn that 21 hours into 40 hours or 30 something hours. Then you go to 40 hours. So you can give yourself 40 and then you use the rest to do whatever you want to do. Or give it all to yourself. Because you deserve to be. Oh, well, you know, maybe I'm not meant for that stuff. Look, do you either create something for your life that's going to serve you, that you have created in any way you want? Like, look, I'm not telling you to not be a lawyer and a doctor, but there are lawyer and doctors who own something. I'm not telling you to not be an engineer and a therapist and all that stuff. There are these people who own stuff who create stuff that they own. I'm not telling you to not do what you love. I'm not scoffing at the, the traditional careers. I'm not saying everybody, oh, go do this business. I'm saying that you need something that is your big idea that's going to make you live the life that you want to live. If you are punching the clock somewhere and you plan to do that for 40 years, it is stupid because you will not have the time and the freedom to live life on your terms. Nothing else matters. Nothing feels better than to live life on your own terms. As the saying goes, if you don't have a plan for your life, you have to get comfortable in fitting in to someone else's plan for their life. And that means you are not priority. So when there's a kid's game, when it's your vacation time, when you don't feel well, when you don't want to go in, when you don't want to do that, you will have to do it because it's not your show. You need your show. The only guys who call the shots, who get to live the best life, who get to freedom, which is inextricably linked to happiness, is a guy who has his own show. You need your own show on the road, even if you're on someone else's show. So start to figure out in the back of your mind what it is that I will do so that when I go to sleep, it's still happening for me. Am I going to write a book? Am I going to do um, paintings? Am I going to start a business? Am I going to have this um, blog? What? is there that when I sleep, somebody will come to it, they'll see it, they'll like what I offer, they'll join my audience, they'll eventually buy from me or they buy from me right now and I wake up, I'll see money in my account. 
and I will scale that. And one day I will wake up and decide that, uh, you know, like today, nah, I'm not going to do anything. Or now I'm sick, that is taken care of. Or now my mom needs this, I can give it to her. Or now I don't need that credit card because I can spend this cash and get what I want. No, I don't need that debt. No, I don't want to live here anymore. No, I don't want to have that in my house. No, oh, oh, the kid needs that. Let me give the kid this thing. And stop living this life where you don't realize that you can get out of the matrix, out of the humdrum life, the life you dream of, the freedom you dream of to do what you want to do. Have a great guy's morning. Go for it. If nothing else resonates with you, I beg you, start to think of how is it that I'm going to go for it. That will change your life forever. That is the biggest mistake you can ever make in life, not going for it. Have a great one, guys. Bin Academy. Thank you.